Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos and the upcoming film Palmer tells a story of the unlikely bond between a man trying to put his life back together after he's released from prison and a young boy who is often bullied for playing with dolls and dressing up like a princess. Today, I'm so excited to be talking to the film's stars, Justin Timberlake and writer Alan, and also the writer, Cheryl Guerrero. Hi everyone, how are you? Good morning. Good. Well, I have to tell you, this story really resonated with me because at one point I was the little boy that liked to play with dolls. So I have to tell you, Ryder, I want to start with you. Your first movie, how special was this experience for you to play Sam? It was really special because it wasn't only a unique role, but it was my first, I'd say, breakout movie. And... It's a lot different from like an HUB commercial. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it was really different from other roles because it was so big and special. And the experience was a lot different because I worked with really big stars. I worked with Juno Temple, Justin Timberlake, um, and a bunch of other people. And, um, so it was different and special because the experience and what I've already told you almost yeah. three times now. Well, you mentioned Justin Timberlake, so I want to hop over to Justin. Uh, Justin, you know, thinking about you as a dad, what was it about this story uh, that really resonated with you and, you know, made you want to be a part of telling it? Well, when I got, when I first got the script, uh, which is so like, perfectly, you know, architected by, uh, by our, by Cheryl. Um, uh, interestingly enough, my first conversation uh, with uh, Cheryl and our director Fisher was that not only did I, not only did I uh, sort of know, uh, you know, off, even off the top of my head, a handful of guys that I could you know, uh, remember uh, from growing up in uh, Smallville, Tennessee, that were like Eddie Palmer, but that I also, from my personal experience, knew what it was like to be a young boy that was into the arts at a young age and would be bullied for it. While it's a, it's, it's a, a different muse, per se, it was... I, I understood both of those uh, sides of it, and and you know beyond that, you know how excited I would be to to play a a man who who who's who's trying to to pick himself up from you know the bottom, and and just that the the, the relationship between these two unlikely this unlikely duo that it just it it I it. it you know, I think the first time I read the script, I was already in tears. And I was like, if this isn't a barometer for, <laughs> for, uh, you know, um, an amazing, an amazing film, then I don't know what it is. Cheryl, you wrote this story, um, such a wonderful story. You know, thinking about this experience, what does it mean to you to have someone like Justin Timberlake say all that about your story and then also attach himself to this project? Oh God. Um... <laughs> Be careful, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I mean, I, I, you know, just in, I, I mean, I, I, where do I even begin? Um, let's put it this way: I had many heterosexual moments watching Justin say my, say my words, and 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 I'm not, you know, I'm sorry to embarrass, I'm sorry to embarrass you, <laughs> but I'm like. You know, I mean, just, That's, uh, I think yeah. I've actually turned red. That's, yeah, uh, I mean, honestly, it's uh, the um, the courtroom scene, um, unbelievable. I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I was at the monitor with the editor, and he's got tears in his eyes. I've got, I'm like bawling, and I don't honestly. And he's, uh, you know. Justin's a, a really, I don't know, he's a, he's a good guy. He's a generous guy. Cause he did that scene over and over and over again. I'm like, is he going to do that again? Like it was, you know, and Alicia's reaction to it was genuine because of what he was doing. Like the camera wasn't on him anymore. It was on them. And he kept performing and kept 
kept doing it and going within. And I'm like, I, you know, we talked about it and we, we added dialogue to that, uh, to that scene. And, and, um, you know, when he's like, I know what it's like to be left alone. And, you know, I did what I did and I got what I got. I mean, I, I'm watching, you know, Sher uh, Sherman, Sherman Lee, who played the judge. I mean, she was like, like even like there wasn't a dry eye during that day. And, and, and um, you know, and he did it over and over. I'm like, is he going to do this again? Like, is, I mean, what you see, you know, because there's what you write, what you film and what you edit. And um, I wish you all can see all of it because it was even, it, it was a longer scene. I'm, I'm very happy with it, but um you know, it's, it's smaller than what we shot that day. And that's, you know, filmmaking. Um, so that was, I mean, there were many moments. I remember he's in the, uh, he doesn't know this, but he's in the bathroom and he's got a white tank on and, you know, he's got the scruff and he's got his arms and he's got his tattoos. And I mean, that was, I mean, that was, I'm like, I think I'm having a heterosexual moment. Um, but then, you know, then I see his wife and I'm like, nope, I'm still gay. Um, you know, sorry. <laughs> oh <my laughs> you know, like, like, but so it was, <laughs> and I'm very, you know, I mean, he's, he, I've seen his work, like I've mentioned it to him inside Lewin Davis. Um, I watched that film. That's one of my favorite films. One of my favorite scenes is with him and Adam Driver and Oscar Isaacs and just his mannerisms and inflections. Um, one of my favorite scenes is the movie in the movie is with him and a, a actor, Jesse Boyd, when I don't want to give it, a, I'm sorry, I'm going on and on and on. No, it's okay. Sorry to make you blush, yeah. Justin. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Justin. Oh, don't, worry, I'm, don't worry, I'm still No, good. but you know, Justin, I do, you know, thinking about um, the story between Sam and your character, Palmer, Eddie, um, what did you learn about self-expression and, you know, gender expression for, you know, young kids. What did this whole experience teach you about that? I'm still trying to get over what Cheryl just did to me. <laughs> um, um, I mean, I think, you know, my, my, my experience growing up and in, in, in working in the industry um, and being around so many different walks of life, so many different races and, um, you know, um, identities. Um, I, I, I guess, um, I guess something that is special about what Cheryl crafted to begin with and what we wanted to hold so dear and, and really try our best to, to, uh, not preach, but, but be, uh, the most, the most careful and, and respectful is that, you know, at, at, this is an eight year old boy, you know, and he likes what he likes. And the way she crafted Sam to be so unabashedly confident about what he likes, you know, even, even in a scene that was so well written and was a lot of fun to act, one of my favorite scenes to act, it's a short scene for me, but it's where he's being bullied in the, in the schoolyard. And I've, I've gotten this job as, as a janitor and I see it and I come out and take up for him, the, the way she wrote it and the way that Ryder so geniusly played it was that there still was this, uh, there still was this, uh, uh, there, were, there was still this non-apology, you know, when, when one, of the, one of the boys says, why do you act the way you do? And he looks and he says, I don't know. You know, but but the way he the way he portrayed that moment was, I, I in a way was almost like I don't have to explain myself, and it for me, um, you know, with with my friends, uh, you know, uh, who are, you know, face any challenges, to find, uh, you know, to face any challenges with identity or bullying because they might be gay or you know, uh, trans, you know, um, um, to find that constitution is what you hope for anybody, you know, but, but even more so with someone who might be, uh, you know, uh, being treated unfairly because of who they are. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Ryder, if I can come back over to you, um, 
you know, you're eight years old in real life. Also, I know Sam is also an eight year old boy. Um, but bullying is something that's very real in this country. So how important is it that kids be nice to each other and that kids, you know, be accepting of, of each other? It's a non-hesitation. I don't know if that's a word, but people really should be nice to each other. It's, it's not something to hesitate about because the world is already so cruel how it is, but it does give rewards once in a while and it's, it's, it's good, but the world is a little harsh and it's really important for people to be nice to each other so they can kind of just live their lives with glee, with hope, with happiness, with, with laughter. So that's, that's a very good question. So yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I agree. We need glee, happiness, humor, laughter, all of those things. Um, Cheryl, you know, thinking about this uh, film, which will be on Apple TV Plus on January 29th, there's a tremendous opportunity uh, for a wider audience. You know, when someone like Justin Timberlake, you know, is attached to a project, there's a huge opportunity for people to see this film that really need to see it. Um, what do you hope that families and that people that watch Palmer and the story about Sam and Eddie take away from the story? As Ryder said, good question. Another good question. Um, and, and I think it's happening already. I mean, with the trailer, um, it's just, you know, you couldn't ask for a better response. Um, people are crying, they're watching it. So I am getting uh, messages on social media from the other day, it was a grandmother who was saying, you know, my grandson um, is going to school dressed as a princess and he's being picked on and thank you so much. And, you know, I saw the trailer, I'm, cr you know, I'm crying. There's gentlemen who have been in prison that uh, have gotten out of prison and they're a father and they are just so grateful um to see something that they can relate to and um yeah so it's just an, it just has been I, i'm very happy with the response that it's been been uh, getting i think we all have been very um you know happy with the response that it's getting because people can you know relate to the different struggles of these these characters and see themselves and it's about hope ultimately so um yeah so uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm lucky enough to have seen the whole thing, and it is definitely all of the feels. <laughs> cry, Anthony. Uh, cry, Anthony. It is. Cry? It is. Um, Anthony, did you cry? Oh, multiple times. Okay. Multiple. I mean, I had. So I was like, I, I was remembering my grandmother putting makeup on. I mean, all of the things, you know. Um, Justin, going back to you, I know you said, you know, you were a young kid that you know grew up in the arts and were bullied for it. Um, but you know, for our community, the L LGBTQ community, allyship is so important, and you've been, you know, such an ally. Why is it so important for you to continue to, you know, support the community and to speak out and to make projects like this? Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I very much enjoy being an ally, and it is a, it is a true <laughs> honor anytime someone addresses me that way. Um, but, uh, you know, I've gotten the question as well that you just asked Cheryl, what do you hope people take away from this movie? And I think as it's apropos to what you just asked me, I think there's been a, there's been a, a, a hot word, uh, like, a, a, like one of those key words uh, over the last year, uh, thematically with a lot of different things. And maybe over the last couple of years, uh, and, and for me, it's been uh, complicit and I guess what I hope when you when you see a character and a man like Eddie Palmer um, in this movie have a transformation of perspective, um, and not only that 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 the way that it affects him gives him so much meaning, and 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 in turn gives him self love. You know, that's what I thought was so geniusly crafted about, I never, I don't think I've told you this yet, Cheryl, but that's, that was my favorite thing about Eddie is that, that the, that the, um, the smallest kernel of 
his acceptance starts to give him his own confidence in and i think that i've gotten a ton of responses from from you know showbiz and athlete friends and people that i haven't heard from from my hometown in forever um and and the responses have been the same even from the trailer and i guess what uh you know to be an ally you know i i think is 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 um i think i think what i hope people take away from this movie is for anyone who uh can raise their perspective to say well you know uh maybe before they said well i've never bullied anyone you know uh for instance uh but 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 maybe you were there you know and maybe you didn't know maybe to your own you know, non-experience or ignorance, you didn't know how to contribute in a positive way, how to react, how to, um, how to stop it. Um, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that those are the conversations that come from people who uh, know in their hearts that they're, they're allies, but maybe didn't have the tools to, to be a, uh, uh, as effective of an ally as they could be. I love that. That's a beautiful answer. And see, films like this will create allies. That's what we're hoping and change hearts and minds. Um, Cheryl, we only have a few minutes left, but thinking about the story, where did you, you know, was it inspired by anything that you went through or was it a story, you know, something that you saw in your community? Um, oh God. Uh, okay, I'll try to be quick. Um, well, one, <laughs> I'm someone that I, I mean, I knew I was gay at eight. Um, I mean, I didn't know what it meant, but as years went on, I'm like, oh, that's what this means. So there was that. Um, but really where the, the, it started from was the character of Eddie. And um, I'm, I'm open about this, but uh, I ended up in, I'm an alcoholic. I ended up in the rooms of AA, uh, which was something, you know, things you didn't see coming, you know, COVID and ending up in AA, but I did. And I'm forever, I'm so grateful um, because that's where I started identifying with men like Eddie Palmer. And, and I'm like, I wanna write a guy like the men that I'm meeting that I can, re I can re there were things I could relate to. They didn't feel comfortable in their skin. I'm like, check that box. And so um, I'm like carrying him around. Where should I put this guy? Should he carry a gun? Should he save people from a burning building? Like, I honestly didn't know what the story was gonna be. I knew I wanted to write this guy who was, you know, looks like Justin. Anyway, you know, beard, hat, you know, all that. I, I'm carrying him on my hikes, but it wasn't until I saw this little boy playing. And this was in 2007. And um, so it's been a journey and I'm so grateful. You know, Ryder wasn't even born yet. And, and I, I really believe in, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say the God word. I believe in God. I believe like this was God inspired and God's timing, absolutely. But I saw a little boy playing and um, you know, I kind of feel like you spot it, you got it. And I'm like, I think this kid is like me, but he's a boy cause he's playing with certain toys. And I'm like, I wonder if his dad knows. And then I just kind of like thought, you know, I live in L you live in LA, you live in New York. People, you know, they don't, they, you can be however you want to be and, and there's no, you know, judgment really. And I'm like, well, what if he lived somewhere where he was expected to play football? He was expected to be a certain way and he didn't, he wanted to be a princess. And um, what if it was a certain community that had certain beliefs? And, uh, and then the next thing I know, I'm like, boom, the boy's going to save the man. And then the man's going to save the boy. And what Justin, you know, just uh, stated about, you know, the change and, and um, uh, what they go through. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. But uh, that's where it came from. No, thank you for sharing. It's such a beautiful story. And Justin, you know, thinking, you know, you're a dad to boys. If at some point in the co you know coming years, they want to have a tea party or something, or, or well, how, how would you, you know, what would you say to them? Uh, English breakfast, chamomile, <laughs> uh, we going green. Um, dad likes coffee too. Can I bring my espresso beans? What are we doing? <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. Well, uh, Justin, Ryder, Cheryl, 
thank you so, so much for the time. Thank you so much for making this film. It's such an important story and reminder everyone out there that Palmer will be available on Apple TV Plus January 29th. So go and watch it because it's so great.